G'day guys, how are you? And welcome back to another video. In today's video, I'm going to show you you can access your SQL server from anywhere in the world via the internet. So let's begin. So the very first thing I'm going to do is I'm just going to double click on SQL Server Management Studio. I'm going to open it up. Now this should work for previous SQL servers, um, Management Studio software. As long as it's relatively up to date, it should be near on the same sort of um, practice to get it to work remotely. So before I start anything, I'm just going to create a new database because um, I haven't actually done that yet. So new database, my database. So there's that one there, it's now been created, which means that I could, you know, theoretically create tables and all the rest of it and so on and so forth. Now what I'm going to do is I'm just going to click on the actual server. So right there, I'm going to right click on it and go to properties and I'm going to go to security and I'm going to tell it that you can Basically, yeah, Windows authorization mode only allows you to log in with the admin or you know the Windows this current computer's login details. By clicking the second option, SQL Server in Windows authorization mode, it will allow me to create a custom login user. So this will be the one that the outside world will log in with in order to gain access to the database. So make sure that one's ticked. Next thing we want to do is we're just going to go to connections, and we're going to tell it to allow remote connections to this server. I'm going to press OK. It's going to let you know that hey, you need to reset the service in order to, you know, for this to configure. We'll do that later. Next, what we're going to do is we're going to go to security. We're going to create a new, uh, new login details for our server. So I'm going to go to logins. So I'm going to right click and go to new login. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to go to SQL Server authorization, and I'm going to create a new login. In this case, it's going to call it AS, and I'm going to go to password. I'm going to create a special password which is just ABC one two three. It's very very special. And once we're done that, I mean, you guys can choose if you want to enforce password policy and all the rest of it, but I'm not going to go right into that. Next, we're going to do is I'm just going to tell it what its default database is, and in our case, it's just going to be my database, the one that we just created a second ago. Um, we now need to give that the user roles within that database. So let's go to server roles, and we're going to tell it that hey, you are actually the system admin. So you guys can go like right into this and tell it you know exactly what and when and who and how and all that sort of stuff. Um, but I'm just going to keep it very, very basic just for the sake of the video. And I'm just going to yeah do it to the minimum that we need in order to gain access to it. But as you guys can see, I mean, there are a stack of options in here. Go through them, play around with it. And, you know, obviously you don't want just any Joe Blow to be able to delete the database and so forth. So there we go. I've now created that login. So if I refresh and expand that, we can now see our AS login right there. So by default, they've got SA there, but I've just decided to do AS. That way it's so, sort of similar and keeps a similar sort of pattern. So now what we're going to do is we're going to disconnect from that. We're going to close out of our SQL server management software. And we're now going to go to SQL server configuration um, manager. Okay, so it's going to look something like this. What we are going to do, um, you may need to reset the computer depending on, like I'm using a newer version and there are quite a few bugs um, I've noticed, but um, we'll get there eventually. But what we're going to do now is we're just going to expand um, this native client and we're going to go to client um, protocols. And there's a TCP IP you can see right there, it's disabled by default. So we actually just want to enable it. So enable it, click yes, make sure the default port is um, 1433. Click apply, click OK, and now it's enabled. Now we need to go through the rest and just sort of set up the rest of the protocols. So once again, expand this one right there. It may look different for you depending on your version, but we need to basically enable um, TCP IP. So this one here, enabled, we're going to say yes. And now we're going to go to this tab here, it says IP addresses. And we're just going to make sure they're all enabled. So I've done this um, previously and it's obviously remembered but make sure that they're all enabled so they all say yes, okay? Um, you don't necessarily need all of them, but just to you know, get connected first off, um, if you're having issues, probably while you're watching this video, um, that way we can at least see that it all is indeed working. So click apply, it's going to tell you that you, know, you need to reset the service in order for this to take effect, that's fine. Um, if there are any more, just go through them. As you can see, there's another one there that is disabled, so we're gonna enable that one as well. And that should be probably all of them. So it just said before that you need to actually reset the service in this to order to take effect. And that was for the login details as well and also to allow remote connections. So if we go to the SQL Server Services, um, we can see that that one there, SQL Server, MS SQL Server. For some people it may say Express, for some people it may not. But yeah, you want to find this one here. Right click on it and we're just going to simply restart the service. 
Okay, so once the service is finally reset, you should be good to go. It should all say running. Um, this SQL browser, it says at the moment stop. Some people say that you need it to be enabled, others say you do not. So we're just gonna see what happens and if we need it, we'll enable it. And if not, we'll just let it be. But yeah, so make sure all of these before the um, client protocols are all enabled and they're all using port um, 1433. That's the default SQL one. So now we can close out of this and yeah, what we're going to do now is we're going to set up a few rules in our firewall. Now, if you do have a, you know, your own antivirus that includes a firewall, you will, you will need to set up a rule with that as well, which is what I'm going to do today. So most people, if they don't have an antivirus, um, they're going to have the Windows default firewall in there by default. So let's just go to Windows, Firewall and Advanced Security. So there it is right there. Forgive my typing. As you can see, I'm using Kaspersky and it's letting us know that, but Windows Firewall is still on. So some people, they make the mistake of just adding the rule to their Kaspersky when indeed the Windows Firewall is still on. So we're going to have to add some rules. So remember that port, how we said it was 1433. We need to add that to the inbound and the outbound. Um, so what we're going to do is we're going to single click on this inbound rule. We're going to right click and we're going to add new rule. We're going to go to the second option, which just says port, and we're going to go next. We're going to make sure it's on TCP. And what we're going to do here is we're just going to type in 1433, which is um, our SQL's port that we've selected, and that's the default one anyways. Allow this connection, yes, you can go right into it and say, you know, if it's secure and all the rest of it, there are a lot more settings in here to play around with, but just to make sure that we can indeed connect to the SQL server remotely, we're just going to click on Allow Connection, click on Next, leave all three of these. You can go into the different um, further if you like. And what we can do is just type in SQL, and I'm just going to put this in, okay? Because this is the port that's going to go in, and there it is right there, okay? Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to go to Outbound Rules, and I'm going to right-click and go to New Rule. Once again, Port, TCP. Some people are saying you don't need to do this, and other people are saying that the only way they get to work is if they did this. So we're going to do both of them. Allow the connection just like before. Leave it that, and I'm just going to write here SQL out. And click finish, and there it is right there. Beautiful. So now we've got a rule set up there. We need to now set it up in, you know, I'm using Kaspersky, so I'm going to do it in Kaspersky. But if you're using Norton or Trend Micro or even AVG or, you know, whatever antivirus that is that you're using, you'll need to do the, do this. Um, each um, vendor has a different way of doing it, so just check to their website and how to do it if you have any issues. So there's my Kaspersky right there. I haven't enabled it yet because I just did a fresh format and I'd rather get 29 days out of it. So I'm going to go to my settings in my case. I'm going to go to protection and I'm going to go to the firewall. I'm then going to go to configure application rules. No, I'm not. I'm going to go to configure packet rules and I'm going to add a new rule. So I'm going to tell it to allow. I'm just going to call this um, SQL server rule. And it's going to be inbound outbound the protocol will be tcp and it's now asking for the port so once again 1433 14 oops 1433 we're going to tell it to allow everything any address in this case and we're going to save it so now we can now see it right there beautiful now this is the part where some people get a bit confused and once again this is going to be different for you know, um, everyone's situation, but we now need to go and log into our router and we need to do some port forwarding. So we're going to go to Google in my situation and you're going to get your router's um, gateway. So if we just go run and go to CMD, which is the little black box, and go to IP config, the default gateway is our window into our router. So 10.0.0.138 is how I'm going to get into my router. So 10.0.0.138. Everyone's router is going to be different, um, but if you follow along, I mean, it should be fairly similar. There is a website called portforwarding.com. Do check it out. It has a lot of useful tips in there. So now I'm going to do is I'm going to go to services. I'm going to go to port forwarding. And now in port forwarding, I can now add my port mapping here. So I'm going to click on the plus. The name of this rule is going to be SQL. It's a TCP. And the WAN port is just going to be 1433. 1433 and the destination this is the um, destination of your server on the network so um, for example with this particular computer its IP address on the network so our local area network IP address is 10.0.0.9 my TV could be 10.0.0.10 
my phone could be 10.0.0.11. It just depends. You can set up a static IP address. Do check out a tutorial how to do that. But in this case, ours is just 10.0.0.9. I've already created a static one. Probably should have done that and showed you guys how to do that. But, you know, check it out in another video. It's really, really easy. So, yeah, 10.0.0.9. And this is even telling me um, things that I've got on the network. So that's pretty cool. So there's my Smart Mirror. There's my Macintosh. And here's this computer here. So there we go. So that's for the destination. That's where it's going. Fantastic. So yeah, save that or add it in my case. And there we go. It's now been added. So that, yeah, theoretically that should be now forwarding all traffic that knocks on port number 1433 to this computer. So yeah, next step is to get our internet IP address. Now this can change quite uh, often depending on how many times you reset your router so I mean I can make another tutorial in the, in the future where I'll actually show you how to get your internet IP address from your house computer or your office computer from another computer so I mean as we all know we can't get an internet IP address from someone else's computer if, the, if we're not on their network but I can actually make a program that you know will help us do that so just quickly for this video I'm going to type in uh, what's my IP Google should be nice enough to provide a thing there with it. So there it is there. And there's our IP address. Beautiful. So let's close out of Google, close out of that, and go back to our SQL Server Management Studio. So I'm going to open it up. I'm just going to quickly check the credentials that I've created before. So when it has authorization, I'm going to go to SQL Server Authorization. And there we go. It's got AS there. I'm going to put in that secret password. And there we go. So we've able to log in using that secret password, which was just ABC123. And you can see there's our database there. Like I said before, you can go right into you know each login user, and you know you could actually hide all of these. But just for the video, um, I've told it not to. So you can see we've logged in as AS, and yeah, everything there seems to be working fine. The login's great. But now we want to actually log in from the internet. So let's disconnect, and we're going to go to connect. And right here it has a server name. I'm going to put in my server's IP address or my internet IP address and I'm going to log in so now fingers crossed when I connect beautiful we've connected so what happened then is we've tried to access our SQL server from outside on the internet and there's a number right there I'm going to reset my router anyway so it makes no difference if you have this number or not and I've been able to log in using the internet see so we're logged in over the internet so if I disconnect now and we're disconnected from the server and I go back to 10.0.0.138 which is my login for my router if I go to services and I actually port forwarding and turn that off just for now okay so my rule has been turned off so my router is not going to allow any connections if I now go back to connect and try and connect with that IP address look at that straight away I mean, before it logged in instantly, but right now SQL is like, hey, I'm trying to connect, but the router's not, you know, forwarding this connection to that port, and then that would forward it to my SQL server. So therefore, it's not going to connect. You can see right there, it's just, it's not liking it whatsoever. But now if I enable that rule, and then go back to my SQL server and go connect, you can see it connected straight away. Okay, so now that we've been able to connect to our SQL server via the internet, we're now going to want to connect to our SQL server via the internet with vb.net. So let's begin. So the very first thing we're going to do is we're just going to open up Visual Studio. I'm using 2017, although it shouldn't matter what version you use. And once that's opened, um, I'm going to go to a VB application with a console. And now we're here. So what we're going to do now is we're just going to quickly import um, system.data.sql client and this will allow us um, access to the SQL client libraries. So before I begin anything, what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to create the connection string that was required to access the database from over the internet. So I'm just going to write dim um, connection string as string equals and what we're going to do here is we're just going to type in server equals and I need to put in my IP address my internet IP address that is so I'm just going to go to what's my IP and there's our internet IP address there I'm going to put that into the connection string 
and then I'm going to say I'm going to use my semicolons to close that off. I'm going to go port, and we know that our port is 1433, and our database is going to equal my database because that's the one that I created before. I think it was like that. And now our user ID equals AS, and our password for that user equals 1A2B3C. Okay, beautiful. So there's our connection string to our database. I don't recommend you just leave it in here, like plain, you know, text like that. If someone needs to sort of um, uh, reverse engineer your program, then yeah, they're gonna obviously see that in plain sight and they'll have access to your database. But just for the video, it's more than enough. Okay, so now I'm going to do is I'm going to now attempt to connect to our SQL server via the internet with this connection string here. So let's begin. So let's go into our submain. I'm now going to type in using sqlcon as new SQL connection. And I've got to put the connection string in there. And then we're going to go to a try class. So if it fails, then our program's not going to completely crash. And now we're going to try and open up our connection or we'll connect to our SQL database. So then you're going to open. And then what I can do is if to so I know that it's open, I'm just going to go SQL dot right line SQL con dot uh, I think it's result is it or hope state. So it's going to write the state to the window. And as for the catch, since it's already got the ex there as an explanation, you can just write ex dot message. And then I'll just put a console.read key right there. And that'll at least let us know that, oops, no semicolons. This is just a yep, quick example of what we can do to quickly, quickly connect to our SQL server um, via the internet using VB.net. So let's click on start and let's see if we're able to connect. And as you can see there, it's saying that it has no idea what the port is. So let's get rid of that and just see if we're able to connect that way. All right, so by removing the port part, I mean, sometimes you need it, and perhaps in this time you don't need it. I usually do it with C Sharp and it usually works. Um, perhaps in the bit on it, you don't do it. But as you can see, the state was able to write that. So let's just write to string. That way we actually get a proper result on what it is. And as you can see right there, the connection is open. So it's been con it's connected. Right now it is connected via the internet to our SQL um, database or SQL server. So let's go back into our router and let's go to port forwarding and let's disable that rule that we created and now let's try and open up our program so right now it's trying to connect it might time out after 10 or 15 seconds you can add it to your string on what the timeout is that you want it to be but as you can see right there a network related blah 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 so at the end of the day it was unable to connect just like that so now if I go back to my port forwarding and enable that and now go back to vb.net we can see right there that it's open. So there you go guys, there's just a quick video on how you can connect to an SQL server via the internet and then from there connect to an SQL server via the internet with vb.net. If you enjoyed this video please comment and subscribe and I'll see you in the next one. Bye bye.